Hello, I'm Brian Blessed. I'm here in my garden. And I've got the Forestry Commission here today. They're my guests. And there's so much I want to ask them. I want to learn from them. So I'm going to spend the afternoon with them learning about nature, but specifically about trees and how to protect them. Oh, it's going to be great. I'm going to love it. I'm here with Andy uh, of the Forestry Commission and with so many questions I want to ask you uh, about it. I mean, tell me mainly, what does it provide, the Commission? Well, well the Commission provides management to the, the public forest estate, which is uh, the woodlands and forests in Britain uh, owned by, by the nations. We're charged with the responsibility of managing that land for uh, public access and recreation, wildlife conservation and of course the uh, production of timber. How do you plan when you cut down trees? How do you replenish them and all that? I see them cut down suddenly and think, oh, but that's not a disaster, is it? it? No, it, it's <coughs> not if it's managed. It is an emotive issue yeah. and what yeah. we have to try and do is put the sentimental side to one side and try yeah. and be more objective. Yes. And as long as we're managing sustainably and we're not cutting more than we can replenish, then that's that's good it's a cycle nature operates in cycles yes. and managing forests sustainably is just another cycle so we do plant we replant we fell we replant and what we're doing is harvesting a natural resource but we're harvesting it in a way which is not depleting it in the long term i, I think the earth still looks pretty healthy it, but it, well, how has climate change affected well, things well it's important not to be too pessimistic but at the same time recognize that the climate is changing yeah and because forestry is such a long-term business, we've got to make our predictions now and make sure that what we're planting and the forests that we're creating and, and maintaining are still fit for the future. This is what makes forestry so interesting. As distinct from a lot of other things, you have to make those long-term judgments. A cycle for trees might be anything between 50 and 200 years from planting to felling. And this is where we sometimes encounter conflict with people who see things in shorter time cycles yeah. in that their lifetime might be let's say 80 90 years and they've grown up with a forest as it is and then suddenly when we fell part of it that's a massive change to people and they can they can sometimes struggle to deal with that but it is part of a cycle we do then come back and we replant it so we're making best use of what our forefathers left for us and we're leaving a legacy there for the next generation or generations. I mean the Forestry Commission, my oh God, what we'll do without you. And I mean I'd love it when sometimes you, you, you cut some trees down or some trees fall down with lightning and so forth or wind and they're left there so the creatures can kind of use it. Yeah. You leave well, it wild and, and strange and logs everywhere, you know, and uh, we, uh, you, you seem to be very flexible and adapt marvellously you know well, as long as what we're doing is uh managing the woodlands in a in a zoned way so we're not felling everything all at once and replanting everything all at once so as long as we're doing a bit here and a bit there and we're maintaining all of the habits yeah. all the time yeah. on that sort of cycle then that's that's beneficial it's all balance isn't it I, I one's very proud of britain in the fact that I have seen, as I've said, from John O'Gertz to Land's End, tremendous work being done in the forests. Well, the Forestry Commission's evolved significantly in the almost 100 years since we, we came into being. And yeah. In those days, we were purely about growing trees, but yeah. through the decades that's developed and public access and wildlife conservation have become, uh, become much more important considerations for us. In Britain's case, I've witnessed it, uh, seeing you at work, uh, and see the chopping down and then the redeveloping and the new trees coming up in different levels uh, and the new species of, of, of creatures that s seem to thrive, new birds come along and thrive wonderfully uh, as a kind of perpetual change uh, and it's conducive to happiness. And what you're expressing here is hope. Uh, as a woodpecker just over there now, you can hear him pecking yeah. away, going tit -tit 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 -tit, agrees with. And you're expressing great hope for the future uh, and um, and for the present isn't that woodpecker <laughs> isn't that true what is marvelous i feel what i observe is that people are protecting all that 
they know when to let a tree rot or when a tree's been knocked down. So that's for the hedgehogs and that's for the badgers or that's for this. So you strike a wonderful, they know. So I think we're going to win out because we have people who understand how to maintain the forest. Our forests are maintained on a marvellous scale. And go out there and help. Go on the trails. Be careful. Learn how not to damage. Learn how to touch and appreciate. Learn about the different trees. It's, it's, it's a wonderful balance. And I feel in Britain we, we really are an example to the rest of the world.